Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Amy Brown and I will be demonstrating how to open a bottle of wine. There are lots of different tools on the market right now. They have the wing hinged bottle opener, even the automatic fancy bottle openers or electric ones. But tonight I will just be using the simple waiter key design. Um, I was in the service industry for over five years and did numerous table side opening bottle services. And in the years since, I've enjoyed countless bottles since. <laughs> um, and even the master sommelier, uh, Rhonda Warren, claims in her book, 60 Minute Wine Expert, Tasting Wine the Expert Way, uh, she even says that this design is what the masters and her field use as well. So, what I'm going to be going over tonight is the different parts of the waiter's key. I will demonstrate opening a bottle of wine, as well as some remedying, remedies for a stubborn cork. Now, first for the waiter's key, there are four parts to this design. You have your spine, which is the back handle, your blade, your hinge, as well as what's called the worm. Now, let's go ahead and open this bottle. The first thing that we're wanting to do is you want to cut the foil using the blade. We're going to use the bottom lip of the bottle as a guide, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it all the way around. And then just use the tip of the blade to just slide it right up and off. That part's trash. We do want to leave the bottom section of the foil as this will help catch any drips that may happen when you're pouring. The next thing that we're going to do is make sure we fold that blade away so we don't hurt ourselves. When you'll take the worm, you want to insert it to the bottle at a slight angle. That's going to help you find the center of the cork. And we're just going to twist it all the way in. Actually, you'll want to stop about a quarter of an inch from the top of the worm just to uh, give yourself a little bit of room. Any more than that could cause you to break the bottom end of the cork. We'll just set it on the table, pull it right up. And it's best to use your hand to help pull it out the rest of the way. That way we're not jolting the bottle at any at all, which might disturb some of the sediment that's resting in the bottom. Easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, sometimes things go wrong. Everybody may have experienced the stubborn cork. So maybe let's say the cork broke and it's still halfway still in the bottle. Um, Master Solmenier, uh Adol Son in his book, Simple Wine Simple, uh, gives us a few remedies for what we can do in that situation. Um, you can always just remove the section of the cork that's already on your wine key and then just try again using the worm. If that doesn't work, it is perfectly acceptable to just push the rest of the cork in to the bottom, into the bottle. Now let's say that that happens and you don't want to serve a bottle of wine that has a bottle piece of cork in it, right? So to remedy that, you have your fancy decanter or even a pitcher will work just fine. And then using a cheesecloth, you'll just cover the top of it and pour the bottle in to strain the remainder of the cork out. Easy enough. So in summation, uh, what we've done tonight is we have familiarized ourselves with the waiter's key, we have reviewed the steps to open the bottle, and we've discussed how we can handle a broken cork or when things go wrong. Um, now I'm sure you may have seen some people smell the cork or say that you're supposed to smell the cork after you open the bottle, right? Does anybody know why that's for? Probably not. Well. Um, Sarah Tracy covers that. She's a blogger for MarthaStewart.com, and she explains in the article, Should I Smell the Cork? Tells us that it's actually not to smell the wine, but to test the cork or check the cork for authentic authentication. The wine labels are very easy to counterfeit for high dollar bottles of wine. However, the cork is nearly impossible. It is also to check the cork to make sure that it doesn't have a spongy texture or a musty smell because um, that would let you know that 
there has been a problem during the storage process. So I would like to thank you all for joining me and I hope you can all stay around to enjoy some of this nice French Bordeaux. Thank you.